Um, today we are going to be finalizing a hate crime, hate speech bill. Uh, I will ask uh, Mr. Dupree uh, to take us through uh, the various options and we will vote on each option, after which we will then put the bill also for, for voting. And that is the procedure we'll be following uh, today. Um, welcome, Deputy Minister John Jeffrey. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, can I now invite uh, Mr. Dupree? Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee and Deputy Minister. I don't know whether um, my deputy would like to um, say something by way of introduction, otherwise um, we will just proceed then with considering um, the, the bill as eased at this stage. Uh, Mr. Dupree, I'm happy for you to continue. I don't have anything to say. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, it's a weird sense of deja vu that I'm experiencing now, but I, I just get the distinct impression that that we have gone through this bill <laughs> a few times. Um, with regard to the long title, Mr. Chair, there's the, just a technical correction to be approved by the committee. I don't know whether the committee would like to come back to the long title uh, after we've gone through the bill itself. With regard to the preamble, there are no proposed amendments. Let's go through the bill first and then we'll come back to the long title. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, the first few amendments, or well, the first proposal is then with regard to the definition of communication instead of oral statement to rather use the word utterance. Uh, that was discussed at length in the committee. Uh, I don't know whether um, I need to pause here at this stage, uh, maybe to get an indication from the committee whether we should rather use the word utterance then. Members, uh, any takers? I think we I think we finally agreed on the word utterance. Am I correct? Thank you, Chair. I, I, yes, Chair. I, Thank you very much. Chair, with your permission, I would like to do the amendments as we go through them. It will just make life a bit easier for us when we prepare the A list for you. Um, so it might take a bit of time here and there, but I will undertake not to waste too much of the time of the committee. Then there are. <laughs> Two options with regard to the definition of harm. The second option is a bit more restricted than the first option. Uh, can I get an indication as to which option is preferred? There's option one and option two. Um, there were members who were for option one last time. And then other members propose option two. Honorable Nipot Trochen. Good morning, Chair. Um, I am for option one. Option one. Uh, honorable, thank you very much. Honorable Jelly. Option one, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Thank you. Are there any other hands? I see none. Then we go for option one. Honorable Hall. Yes, Chair. Um, maybe as a matter of course, um, will you please just um, note that in all instances, we will, um, given the fact that there will be a clear majority for. Uh, options today and there's no room for debate any longer please just note that we will reserve then our stance on support or not uh, depending on which option the majority chooses uh, that would so be thanks 
That will be noted, uh, uh, Honorable Hon. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure if you allow that anticipation in advance um, in the manner he's doing it, because he doesn't know what we'll do in each option. <laughs> yeah, Chair, on, on that score, I don't know whether whether members who were absent from all of the deliberations must have a speaking turn today. I mean, they're just here as, as, as um, to, to fill up the numbers. So maybe the Honorable Jainke must fulfill that role. <laughs> Thank you very much, Honorable Milda. No anticipation. Honorable <laughs> Chief, thank you again for the manner in which you conduct these meetings and for allowing me. I haven't got any voting rights in this meeting, but I will also support the DA stance on this. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, Honorable uh, Chanji, uh, in his uh, Section 194 committee, would have said, uh, I take note of all other views. Uh, so we take note yeah. of all <laughs> <them. laughs> We take note of you. <laughs> Can we proceed? Uh, uh, Honorable Chair, I've had my hand raised. It's Honorable Tring here. Oh, Honorable Tring. Chair, uh, apologies from the Honorable Swart, uh, who was not able to, uh, to attend this particular meeting because of an urgent commitment that he had. Um, but uh, just to record that, uh, I want to put on, on, on notice, he is the uh, preferred position of the, of the ACDP, which Mr. Swart had indicated. Um, and if at the end uh, you give an option uh, for the parties to do that, uh, I will put forward to the ACDP's uh, position. Thank you, Chair. No, I think, uh, uh, Honorable Thring, what we will do for today is because we have deliberated at this, uh, at this clauses at length. Um, now, um, because I know some of the options were specifically suggested by Honorable Swart, and it would be um, our preference that um, they, you indicate the preference or the option that the ACTP supports and others who support a different option would indicate as such and we look at the majority and we, 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 we take the view of the majority. We, 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 I think we have really ventilated this matter for a long period of time since last year. So we would not be inclined generally to open another round of discussions. Okay, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. The second one, uh, Mr. Dupree. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, option two will then be deleted because option one is then the preferred option with regard to the definition of social detriment, which relates to the definition of harm, where there is reference to social detriment in that definition. Um, this is sort of a definition to, def to, to add to an exist the meaning of an existing definition. And there are two options. The first option is to define social detriment as Detriment that under Honorable Mola, please proceed. Thank you, Chair. No comment at this stage. Thank you. Sorry, Chair. Yes. So yes. the definition of social detriment, option one. Uh, indicates that social detriment should be defined as detriment that undermines the social cohesion amongst the people of South Africa. And then option two is the option to delete the proposed definition of social detriment. Thank you very much, members. Uh, are there any takers on this one? We have two options. We've got social uh, option one uh, that defines social detriment, and option two that would delete uh, the definition itself of uh, social detriment. 
Honorable Newport, Rojo. Honorable Um, option one, Chair. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Mola. Yes, Chair, I support option one as well. Thank you. Option one, Honorable Masako, Chair. No, Chair, I support okay. option one. Thank, thank you. you very much. Any other uh, views? Chair, please just note that we again reserve our position. The Democratic Alliance reserves its position. Okay. Honorable Yako. Um, could you just note that we also reserve our position at the moment? Okay. okay. The EFF also reserves its position. Uh, then option one is agreed to. Can we go to the next one? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the definition of characteristics that relate to the offences to be created in terms of Section 1, there are quite a number of options there. Um, so the first option is to exclude age from the definition of characteristics. And then there are also proposed amendments that must please be approved. And then in paragraph I, uh, there's also the option to exclude language. And then in paragraphs K and L, the option is under paragraph K to exclude occupation or trade from the list of characteristics. And then in paragraph L, the option to exclude political affiliation or conviction from from the definition the remaining paragraphs are merely technical corrections that have been affected to that proposed definition so i will take you back then to the first one age mr chair I think it would have been much more elegant if you had said uh, option one as the exclusion of all the issues that you have uh, excluded, then option two, which includes all of them. I think it would have been easier for us to, to engage, but I, I will leave it to the members. I apologize for that, Chief. No, no problem. Uh, uh, members? Thank you, Chair. Good morning, colleagues, and <clears throat> also DM and the team. Chair, I think I, I was also confused when it comes to this, the way he has put it. I think if we go under the uh, options already that he has been put, I'm not sure if ever is it uh, according to the exclusions <coughs> that he has put here. If we can get clarity on that one, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, maybe, maybe just to jump in, my understanding is from what you've said and which um, Mr. Dupree apologized for, but I think he would be accepting as the way to go. Um, option one is the exclusion of all the options in the definition. Option two is the inclusion. Uh, just say it slowly, uh, Deputy Minister. Chair, it's what you, what I put you were saying. <laughs> yeah. Option one is if you take the definition of characteristics, option one is the exclusion of all the options. So in other words, age, um, uh, AIDS, language, uh, occupation and trade, political affiliation, they all stay in. All the, op the options are excluding them. So it's, it's option one is excluding what's in the text as options. Option two is including them. So option two would be excluding age, excluding language, excluding occupation or trade, political affiliation. So I don't know if, I hope that clarifies it. 
So it's it's option one is excludes the the options. Mm -hmm. um, option two is to accept the options, which will then lead to the exclusion of certain characteristics. Okay. Now, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Maseko Chele. Chair, I think I, I would, I'll go with the exclude, uh, inclusion of age and the all the political affiliation, they must be included. Hey, it, I'm a bit, <laughs> maybe I didn't hear you. You are saying option one, if I have to interpret this term, we are including, we don't exclude anything. Uh, Chair, but, through you, that, that's correct. And option two, we are excluding age, what is it? It's birth, age, birth, gender, identity, language, and all those things. Is that what you are saying? Chair, just, just to help clarify, birth and gender identity were already agreed to be, and sex, which includes intersex, were already agreed to be out. So the exclusions are only the, um, the ones where there are options to exclude. So option two would be saying exclude, exclude age. Um, it would also be saying... Um, uh, include race or skin color under F, but those are included elsewhere. So I'm actually, it, you know, so that's what with that. It's the issue of uh, excluding language, excluding occupation or trade, excluding political affiliation or conviction. Um, yeah, that's that's basically it. The other ones that are crossed up were already agreed upon to to go. So I think what Mr. Dupria has put is is that um, the options are excluding things. So um, you had said option one is, is to reject the options. Option two is to accept the options, which would effectively be excluding. So I think the, the, the point really, maybe to make it easier, is should these, these um, options under the yellow be accepted or rejected? And, and um, that's, that's basically it. Yes. Uh, so in other words, it's a question of do we exclude age? Uh, we do, I, I, just with F, we do exclude race and skin color because they're listed elsewhere. I think Mr. Dupria, that shouldn't have been an option because um, race and skin color are, are included as M for race and Q for skin color. So it's basically, do we exclude age? Uh, or do we keep age, language, occupational trade, political affiliation or conviction? That's that's the question to the members. Well, thank you very much, Honorable Janja. Uh, Chair, thank you, Chair. Yeah, uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Dupree for making it more exciting and complicated, but I'll go for option one. Option one. Chair. I'm supporting my whip on this one. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Any contrary view? Chair, once again, if that is the majority position, please just note that we reserve our position as a DA. Thank you very much. The DA reserves its position. Um, I take it that uh, there are no other hands. Uh, Chair, the, I would say the ACDP as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Honorable Nuvo Tuchan. Um, apologies, Chair. Um, I'm still a bit confused. Um, does it, okay, sorry, Honorable Wilmer's network is, is very bad. Um, if you can just give me a second. Um, I just want to clarify that we are then keeping Apologies, Chair, I am struggling with my, my network. I've just changed to another device. 
Um, I have a bit of confusion. Um, so about you know which option is to keep, which option is to exclude. So I'd like to just say that um, we can keep my position. Uh, my position is to keep all the the ones that are indicated. Those options. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, so option one is a great tool uh, with the reservation from the ACTP, the Democratic Alliance at this stage. Let's proceed. I'm sorry, Chair. I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, I don't want to interrupt your meeting. However, I think um, at the end of the day, we will be reviewing our comments. Uh, on all the it's just that I'm on the road and I don't want to interfere your meeting. Honorable Yako, we can't hear you properly. There is an echo on your side. On my side? Yes. Oh no. Um I was saying that um, we're going to be reserving our comment uh on all the options. Uh, I, I just don't want to interrupt your meeting because I'm on the road. But okay. I am in the meeting though. Okay, so yes. we will take it every time that you yes. you are serving. No, thank yes. you very much. Thank no, no you. problem. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Tupri, let's go to the next one. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the definitions of grounds, uh, the proposed um, definitions there, and it, those, those relate to the offense of, of hate speech. The first option then reflects albinism, ethnic or social origin, gender, HIV and AIDS status, nationality, migrant or refugee status or asylum seekers, race, religion, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression or sex characteristics or skin color. And then the second option is a more restrictive option that only reflects the grounds of albinism, ethnic or social origin, gender, HIV and AIDS status, nationality, migrant or refugee status or asylum seekers, and then race or religion. Okay, any takers, Honorable Chairman? Thank you, Chair. I'll go with one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. One, two. Yes, option one has been suggested. Uh, Honorable Nego Tuchin. Um, option one, Che. Option one has been supported. Um, I take it that the ACTP, DA, and EFF are reserving their position. Am I correct? Yes, Che. Thank you. Correct, Che. Thank you very much. Hello, it's Grunas. Good morning. Um, you can accept that unless we state otherwise, we reserve our position. Okay, okay. No, thank you very much, Honorable Breitenbach. Let's proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Then, clause two, there are no proposed amendments there. With regard to the offense of hate crime, clause three. The important thing here to note is that there is a proposal for just drafting subclause one a bit more clearly, but the important um, inclusion there is that the underlying offence uh, of a hate crime will then exclude the common law offence of criminal urea or the offence of hate speech as referred to in Section, uh, section 4 1 of clause 4 1 of the bill, and the proposal is merely to maybe um, do a clearer redraft of the existing clause 1. I will pause there, Mr. G. So, it's how many proposals are there? It's proposal 1 and 2. It's just a proposal for a redraft of the existing subclause one, Mr. G, with that important inclusion of um, the words that will ensure that the common law offence of criminal urea or an offence referred in section four one 
is excluded. You will recall that there were many commentators who were concerned about the possibility of um, uh, double criminality. And it's also included, uh, or those exclusions are also inserted then in the proposal. But the proposal is for the subclause one just to be, uh, well, it's, it's an attempt to to draft it but more clearly and not have, have this one long section which is the existing subclause one Chair, it, maybe just to to assist um the the two what's the text and the proposal are basically the same content wise uh, the issues mr Dupria has spoke was speaking about about the exclusions of the common law and of criminal urea and for one were agreed to by the committee. It's just a question. I think the question to the committee is, can the committee accept the proposed redraft of 3.1, which is the same content, but we just think it makes it clearer. Can the committee accept that redraft, which is contained under the heading proposal? Thank you very much, Deputy Minister. Honorable Nubo Tukhan. Um, yes, Chair, I support the uh, the redrafting because it does, the proposal reads much better. Um, you. So, yes, I support the redraft. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. I second uh, Honorable New. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, I think uh, just for the sake of completeness, I will continue to indicate and the, that the following parties, ACGP, DA, EPF. Uh, yes, I was, going to, I was going to say they reserve the redrafting option. <laughs> Very they, <interesting>. reserve, <laughs> they reserve their position. <laughs> uh, um, Honorable uh, Janji, um, Honorable Horn has just uh, indicated to me that uh, uh, if you continue, he is going to brief Advocate Bofo to deal with you. Uh, I've noted that. <laughs> yeah. Well, Chair, um, I, uh, I, I want to say to deal with the Honorable Janke, I don't need an advocate. Um, and um, so, so yes, but but through you, he, he is then on on. I want to say an official warning. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yes, uh, Honourable Yako. I just wanted to chip in there. I wanted to know: is he sick or is he not sick, Honourable Jank? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did he decide if he's sick or he's not sick? <laughs> no, let's, let's focus. Can we move to the next one? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Then with regard to the um, subclause 2, as it was introduced, the proposal is just there to merely clarify that um, a person who commits an underlying offence then uh, can be found guilty of a hate crime and that the criminal record of the person concerned should reflect that. And I think this is something that, that has actually been accepted by the committee uh, without much debate. So, um, and I don't want to sound arrogant, Mr. Chair, but I suppose that the committee will then accept rather the proposal than the existing subclause to chair. Thank you very much, members. Do we have to no. And then you go to him. Thank you again, Chair, and thank you, uh, Mr. Dupria. I accept the proposal. I think Mr. Um, Mr. Dupriya, you mustn't worry about 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 that. So, um, we accept the proposal. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Zena. We accept the proposal, Chair. Thank you. 
That has been seconded. Um, the, I think uh, DA, EFF, ACBP, EFF, FF plus, uh, reserve their position. Can you proceed? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Then stop clause three is just merely uh, a technical correction, which the committee has also previously been informed about. Then with regard to clause four, the offensive height speech. Once again, we have two options there. The first option is then the option that refers to be harmful or to incite harm under Roman one. And the difference is that option two does not refer to the words be harmful or uh, then it only or it merely refers to inciting harm under Roman one of that option. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. Any takers? Option one or option two? Honorable Jalen. Option one, Chair. Uh, option one. Honorable uh, Anybody, Rohan? I support option one, Chair. Uh, uh, option one has been supported. Uh, uh, Honorable Deputy Minister. No, Chair, just, just two, because the big difference here is um, if you use the K word, it's harmful. It's not inciting harm. So I just want to get clarity that the DA is not wanting to criminalize the use of the K word. Um, I think they would have indicated as such if they wanted to speak. Uh, we take it the, the earlier position that they will be reserving their position. Um, Mr. Chair. Honorable Breitenbach. The, the Deputy Minister with respect to being mischievous, I thank him to not put words in our mouth. We will decide what we want and what we don't want. And my dog agrees with me. And uh, and we reserved our position and that is our position. And I'll thank him not to to uh, to resort once again to cheap politicking in the committee. It's out of place. Thank you very much. Uh, let's proceed. Uh, the DA has reserved his position. Chair, that was just a question. It was just a question. Um, I think... Uh, they have answered in the manner that they have answered. Uh, I would not tell them how to answer such a question. Let's proceed, members. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Then the committee has previously accepted that it's not um, necessary to have paragraph C, and it may be deleted because it is to a certain extent already been repeated in paragraphs A and B of the existing provision. Then with regard to clause two, there are some redrafting um, proposed in the subclause two as it was introduced, but then the department uh, submitted the proposal to the committee, which is uh, once again repeating the existing meaning of subclause 2 as it was introduced, but possibly just a bit clearer drafting. And then with regard to paragraph D, under those exclusions, there are two options. The one option is the interpretation or espousing of any religious conviction, tenet, belief, teaching, doctrine, or writings that does not advocate hatred that constitutes incitement to cause harm based on one or more of the grounds. And then the second option, if I remember correctly, it was a proposal by the ICDP um, to refer to religious organizations or individuals uh, espousing certain tenants in public or private. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dupri, Honorable Chale. Thank you, Chair. I think we'll still go with one, Chair. Uh, option, option one. Option one is being proposed. Uh, any other member wants to speak? Uh, Chair, as indicated, the, yes. the ACDP's position would be option two. Uh, ACDP option two. Uh, Honorable Neo Druchen supports option one. Honorable Neo Druchen supports option one. Um, I think members uh, will go with option one. Um, option two has been supported by the ACDP, but it does not have the majority. The DA reserve its position and the EFF reserve the position. EFF and FF plus they reserve their positions. Can we proceed? Thank you, Mr. Chief. With regard to the proposed amendments to Clause 5 uh, that deals with victim impact statements, those are mainly technical in nature, and I think the committee has in the past um, also discussed this. I don't think there's much to be said about this anymore, and, and I suppose that um, the committee will approve the proposed amendments by, by the department. Um, members, do we confirm? Honorable Master Pachele? Yes, Chair, we confirm, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any other member? Uh, Honorable Neo Druchen confirms, Chair. Honorable Neo supports the confirmation. Um, I take it that all other parties uh, are reserving their position. Let's proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Clause six dealing with penalties or orders. Uh, merely a spelling correction there in subclause one A. Um, and then also technical amendment in subclause two. And then there are two options with regard to penalties for, for hate speech. The first option, it, we, well, we indicated it as an option, but that is in fact uh, the provision as it was introduced. And mm -hmm. then the second option is to maybe just simplify it by not distinguishing between first and second offenders and then uh, also to um, increase the the maximum uh, penalty that that can be imposed by a presiding officer. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Any takers? Option one or option two? Honorable Masaba Chair. I think Chair, I'll take option two where it's not exceeding eight years. Uh, option two is being supported. Honorable Velma Nibot Rohan. Hi, um, thank you, Honorable Chair. I support Honorable Jele in option two. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I see no other hands. I take it that all other parties reserve their position. Uh, let's proceed. Option two has been agreed to. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Then the proposed amendments with regard to clause seven was also discussed um, on, a, on a number of occasions by the committee. I don't know whether I need to highlight anything here for the committee. I think it is merely for the committee to decide whether it would um, want to approve the proposed amendments then to clause seven of the bill. Members, any comments on clause seven? Honorable Jale. Honorable Jale.
Oh, sorry, I'm on mute. No, we'll go with the department chair. Thank you. My apologies. I didn't see that uh, I'm muted. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any contact review? Uh, none. We think that, uh, in fact, we take it that the other parties still reserve their position. Close eight. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, that's the reporting on the implementation of the Act. Uh, there's not much to be said there, except that um, just a correction of, of a spelling mistake there or technical correction. With regard to Clause 9, then, also just the inclusion of that specific commission, which commission is mentioned in clause eight but not in clause nine i don't think um that actually um led to much debate i don't want uh sh should i pause here mr chair so that we can maybe just see whether yeah i think it's procedurally correct that uh, i put it that uh, uh, a member is fine with what you have just said on clause eight Yes, Chair, we are fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I take it that uh, all other parties except the ANC uh, reserve their position. That has been agreed to. Let's proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Then when we get to uh, clause 10, it deals with the regulations. And I think we, we at some stage had two options, but the committee previously um, preferred that with regard to subclause two, the, that clause should remain as it was introduced to ensure that Parliament has the opportunity to approve draft regulations made under, under this legislation. Thank you very much. Any comments on clause 10? Honorable Jale? We still agree, Chair, on the same issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other view? Any seconders? Uh, Honourable Neo Druchen seconds, Chair. Honourable Neo, Neo, Neo Druchen seconds. Uh, I take it that all other parties reserve their positions. Uh, let's proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Then clause 11 just refers to the schedule to the bill, which means um, certain pieces of principal legislation. And then clause 12 is the short title and commencement of this spe specific piece of legislation. Any comments on uh, 11 and 12? No members. comments, Chair. No comments. Thank you, Chair. You support it the way it is? Yes, we support it, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, any seconders? Uh, yes, Honourable Chairperson, um, Honourable Mayor Druchen, thanks. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Dupree, can we proceed to the next one? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Then mainly with regard to the schedule and especially item one under the Criminal Procedure Act, we uh, had to propose um, certain amendments to the uh, provisions dealing with section 18 uh, as a result of the fact that um, section 18 was amended after the 
hate speech bill was introduced into parliament in 2018. Those amendments were as a result of um, a constitutional court judgment. Then with regard to item two, uh, there's merely a technical proposal. Instead of referring to section 270A, capital A, it might be more appropriate then to refer to section 269, capital B. With regard to item three, merely the technical amendment of referring to 16 to 2023. That's interesting. Yeah, sorry, Chair. <laughs> um, I sidelined myself now, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go there. I'll, I'll just check the introduced version of the bill. Um, in any event, Mr. Chair, then there are amendments to some of the schedules to the Criminal Procedure Act uh, to ensure that there's reference to this piece of legislation. And then those are merely technical amendments. Um, and then once again, mainly uh, an amendment to the reference to the year of the Principal Act. And then when it comes to the Criminal Law Amendment Act as well, to ensure that there is appropriate reference then to the Hate Crimes and Hate Speech Act, and mainly also technical, just replacing 218 with 2023. There's also proposed amendments to the Child Justice Act, once again, to ensure that there's appropriate reference to the Hate Crimes and Hate Speech Act. And that, that brings us to the end of the schedule itself, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Jupri. I now put the schedule members. Uh, are we in agreement with the schedule as corrected? Honorable Chair? Yes, Chair, we are in agreement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any seconder? Honorable Mayor Drichen, Chairperson, I second the schedule. Thank you. Thank you very much. The schedule has been seconded. I take it that the following parties, ACTP, Democratic Alliance, uh, Economic Freedom Fighters, and FF Plus uh, reserve their uh, comments uh, or they reserve their positions. Um, I think that is the end of it. Am I correct, Mr. Dupre? That is correct, Mr. Chair. Insofar as our working document is concerned, yes, that is correct, Chair. Uh, how soon can we get uh, the A document? Mr. Chair, I'm going to start immediately with the A document. Um, and I will undertake to do that as quickly as possible. Uh, I just need to liaise with the committee secretaries. I don't know whether you would want to approve an electronic word version of the A-list or whether you would rather want to approve the printed version of the A-list. But I doubt where it, whether it will take us more than... Uh, I don't know how busy the the um, office that do the printing are at this stage, but um, I will I will undertake to submit the A list in electronic version to the committee secretaries by close of business tomorrow, chair. Possibly, if we are lucky, even even earlier. But it's oh. always difficult to to make an undertaking in that regard, Mr. J. So I would I would ask you to please indulge me in that regard. Okay, uh, Committee Secretary, on Tuesday next week, what are we doing?
Chair, let, let me just quickly check the program. Yeah, sure. Uh, chair, in terms of the program, we should be having a workshop on Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, Honorable Brittenbach, for Tuesday, there is a workshop. Is everything ready for us to proceed? Honorable Prittenbach. Members. Can you repeat, I was thrown off the, off the platform for a moment there. Eh? Yes, um, the next available date that we have uh, next week Tuesday is the day of the workshop with Tuesday and Wednesday. So I was asking is that, is everything uh, ready for the workshop to proceed? Yes, it is, Chair. And okay. after our conversation confirming that, I again firmed it up with the participants. So, yes, it's ready to roll. Okay. Um, can I suggest that maybe we take 20 minutes uh, just to deal with the bill before we proceed with the workshop? Uh, Chair, I'm happy to do that, but um, it's largely up to um, uh, Professor Munting, so I would have to confer with him on the actual content, on the actual uh, order of the program, so I'm not in a position to do it right now. Okay. I can uh, send an email that can be round robin, though. Okay, no, what, what we can do, if the workshop, for instance, starts at 9, maybe we can, as a committee, uh, meet at uh, 8, and then do the actual bill so that we don't interfere with the with the proceedings of the workshop. Well, that is also dependent on I think the workshop being virtual. It will be easier to do that. Honorable Yako. No, and I just wanted to know those kind of details myself and that is it going to be a physical meeting? Um, where would it take place? Um, or is it going to be a virtual uh, workshop? Um, I think, I don't know if maybe we would not derive more quality out of it if it was physical, but um, I mean, I'm, I stand to, 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 to allow myself to be at the mercy of the committee. Okay, I think for the purposes of discussing the bill, we'll, we'll come back to that. For the purposes uh, of- Chair, sorry, sorry. The, at, this time, at this point in time, the workshop is intended to be physical. Physical. Okay, I think what we can do, even if it's physical, uh, because every member would be there, uh, we can start with the adoption of the A-list, then we start with the workshop. It shouldn't matter really. As long as we have the quorum and the members, we can just quickly deal with the with the adoption of the bill and then uh, we'll proceed. Honorable Deputy Honorable Chair, followed by Honorable Deputy Minister. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I think Chair, I was I'm, I'm I'm agreeing with you. Let's start first with this one so that we know that we are done with it, it's no longer in our hands. And then we can proceed with our 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 workshop. I think I'll I'll, I'll agree with that point here. But uh, maybe my confusion might be on that if the workshop is physical and we need to adopt uh, this bill before the workshop, are we going to do that? visual or do we have to come eight o'clock also it's it's just a clarity check 
Okay, thanks, thanks. Uh, we'll come back to that, Honorable Chair. Honorable Deputy Minister. Thanks, Chair. It was just that um, you, you've spoken about adopting the A-list, uh, but also don't forget that usually the committee adopts a report, um, okay. uh, which report, I mean, I'm sure to speak, to make things go smoother. I mean, I can't see the, if, if this, um, this exercise today took uh, 45 minutes going through the bill clause by clause. Uh, I mean, presumably the A-list will be circulated and then members can say if they've got any, effectively it's, it does the A-list reflect what has been agreed upon now today, not reopening things. Is it a reflection of what you've, you've agreed upon today? So that should really only take a few minutes. And then um, the committee report um, if I presume, I mean, that gets drafted by the committee section or the researchers or the content advisors. Uh, presumably, if they circulate it um, beforehand, that also needn't take that long. Uh, but it was just really by my purpose of putting my hand up was just to remind you about the committee report. No, no, it's, uh, it's always well understood that uh, after we've adopted the A list, then we'll deal with the committee report same day. But I think we are doing a serious oversight. Um, Honorable Janji, is section 194 sitting Tuesday and Wednesday? We, 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 we actually, I don't know what date Wednesday is. Uh, uh, Monday and Tuesday, we have uh, a last witness before uh, Professor Madonsela, who's on the 1st of March. So if Wednesday is the 1st, then it's a critical week for us. Yeah. Uh, members, can we, can we, I work with the committee secretariat on which day I will come back to you because one, we would want to have a quorum. Uh, to even for this day, uh, we had to, in fact, we are indebted to the members of section 194 because they had to postpone, uh, in fact, to start late with their own hearings. I think uh, to, to be fair to all members, let's we'll work out the date uh, and come back to, uh, to the committee. Honorable uh, Horn. Yeah, no, Chair, I just wanted to say we can release them. We will still be a healthy <laughs> so, so don't uh, let them do their work. <laughs> no, no, I think uh, let's agree, members, that uh, uh, Honorable Yako. No, Chair, I was just a bit confused now. What, are you, what date are you talking about now for the next, for the training? Or, or for the finalization of this bill? No, the training proceeds Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, what we are suggesting is that let's come back to you on the date on which we are going to be adopting the A-list. No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Honorable Chair. Thank you, Chair. Chair, let me just uh, propose that I agree with a uh, your proposal, Chair, that you go and and work it with the team, uh, but also, Chair, let's uh, make it open on the issue of saying if there are any changes with the workshop, can we continue with uh, the issue of the bill? If maybe uh, uh, we, whatever reasons that may come for Tuesday for workshop not to sit, can we propose that we, we will be flexible and just come and deal with this issue. Thank you, Chair. No, thank you very much. No, I think uh, because we, uh, we I, I think let's stick to us coming back with the date that is going to be accommodative of everybody. Honorable Breitenbach. Uh, thank you, uh, Honourable Chairperson. I just wanted to say that the workshop is a two-day workshop. It's been planned for a long time. It's been postponed once before. A lot of people have gone to a lot of trouble. Uh, I would like to see it uh, being flexible uh, just to accommodate this. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Honorable Nibot Rokhan. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to know the um, the physical workshop, where will the venue be? Is it going to be at Parliament or, or where? Just wanted no. to know about that. Yes, no, we are coming to that, Honorable Nibot Rokhan. It's what Honorable uh, Iago also raised, but I thought that we must first dispense with the issue of the bill, then we can go to the logistics of the workshop. So, um, Deputy Minister, thank you very much. And Mr. Dupree, thank you very much. Uh, we will come in, we will be in contact with yourselves as to when uh, you, we will be finalizing the bill in terms of uh, dealing with the A-list. That will give you a bit of time to to have the printed version uh, done uh, and circulated. Uh, thanks very much, Chair, and thanks to, to all the members. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, quickly, members, uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister, Mr. Dupree. Uh, you are released. If you want to attend into any other matter, you are released. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Have a nice day. Same to you. Thank you very much. Uh, members, let's come to the issue of the workshop. Um, Committee Secretary, can you take us through the logistics? Uh, Chairperson, uh, I think it might be better to, to have this workshop in Parliament. Uh, when we look at the budget, it doesn't look like this. We, we've got any money, but we, we will try and see if maybe they can seek funds for an answer to But then if you look at uh, Wednesday, I think it was on Wednesday we have the budget speech and it's uh, physical, if I remember correctly. So we might have a challenge of in, if we are far away from parliament, we might have a challenge of getting members to, to the city hall on time. No, but we're talking about next week. The budget speech is this week. Seems like, you know, Chair, I'm looking at the wrong program, actually. Yeah. Uh, but oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. On Wednesday, this uh, this plenary, which is our cluster, but it is it is hybrid. Yeah. Okay. So we can we can try and get maybe the somewhere nearby. Mr. Chair, may I make a proposal? Yes. I I will um, firm up all those arrangements now with Professor Munting. And then I'll liaise with uh, Mr. Romano, and we will make all of these arrangements, make sure they're in place by not later than Thursday, and we will circulate them to all the members. I think members, I think that take us uh, to the right direction. Um, so Honorable Brittenbach is taking, in, in fact, is continuing uh, uh, with her leadership of the process. Uh, they will be in touch with the committee secretariat um, they, they will take into consideration that uh, on Wednesday, uh, the, there's a sitting and our cluster will be asking uh, questions to the minister. So they will take all that into consideration and look for an appropriate venue. Um, so uh, by Thursday, information will be circulated to all members. And we think that it is compulsory for all members to attend except Honorable Janji and Honorable Mona would be on the section 194 um, the committee that has also been given stricter deadlines to finish its work. Is that in order, members? Thank yes, sir. Thank you very much. And the last issue, um, members, uh, we were supposed to meet tomorrow. Uh, to deal with the legal practice regulations. Uh, we were informed yesterday uh, that uh, the Legal Practice Council is not available, the executives are not available for both yesterday and to, uh, for today and tomorrow. 
um, notwithstanding the fact that we had communicated this thing, uh, this request to them long time ago, uh, they elect, elected to respond uh, yesterday to say that they are not available. It's a matter that we are going to take up with them, that uh, parliament can be treated in that way. Um, it's, 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 we are not inviting people because uh, we've got nothing to do. In fact, the, that issue of the Legal Practice Council has been outstanding for a very long time. The vocational training regulations have been outstanding for a very long time. Um, so it's not something that uh, we, we really take lightly. Um, any change in the program causes havoc. We know how tight our program is. We will take, we'll take that matter up with them and the ministry. Um, so tomorrow we would not be meeting. Uh, that gives people like Honorable Swart a good opportunity to attend to their lockdown as a member of the finance committee. And then we would meet, um, when is the next time Friday? Are we meeting committee secretary? Uh, Chairperson, on Friday we are at the Concord. Oh, yes. I think maybe um, immediately after this. Uh, so members, uh, you agree that uh, we don't meet tomorrow. I mean, even if we were to disagree, there will be nothing to talk about. Um, two, that uh, we make a follow up with legal practice council. That is not how they should be interacting with parliament. Um, is that in order? It's in order, Chair. I that you become much firmer with the legal practice council and i it's a pity i hope that dm is still here um just be beyond just the non-attendance um, and i'm looking forward to that meeting they're quite critical issues uh, in yeah. that space so yeah, i would yes. add you become much firmer with them no, and I will do that. But, but I had already raised that with, with the deputy minister. But I think we will write a formal letter to the minister uh, to, to register our displeasure. And uh, you're quite correct, uh, um, uh, Honorable Judge. I mean, the, the, this issue of uh, the, the regulations uh, on the training, I mean, we have been waiting for them for a long time. Um, because we did not agree with the previous ones. So it's something that is quite urgent. Honorable Jalen? No, sir. I, my apology, I, I, was, I was cut off. I didn't hear the only the important one uh, that we are uh, we're still not meeting them, just that one, Chair. I didn't hear it properly. I was off, cut off. You know, we're supposed to meet with the Legal Practice Council. They wrote to us yesterday that they are not available. Um, for tomorrow. Um, so we are going to follow up with them and the minister because mm. that is not the way of uh, dealing with parliament. Um, we, we are going to make a follow up on that, but, uh, but by the crack of the issues that will not be meeting tomorrow. Okay, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, can we now move to preparations for the 24th? Committee Secretary. Uh, Chairperson, the, the argument was that uh, members will book their own flights and then uh, we would uh, arrange accommodation in which at this moment looks like it would be the Premier Hotel or Artambo. And then uh, on Friday morning, we have arranged transport to take members to, to the court and then I think uh, there will be two or three members who will also, who will be coming back to Cape Town. So we have also arranged transport for those two or three members to, to get to the airport. Thank you, members. Are there any questions on the date of the 24th, the Judiciary Day? Logistically related questions? Thank you, Chair. I think uh, some of us will be coming, we will be going to Jobek on this Thursday. Mm -hmm. So we, it means we'll go straight to the hotel. 
So yes. now coming from, will, will, will we have transport for from the court to our different places or do we have to arrange for ourselves? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I think you must go, you must first go home, collect your car and drive to the hotel. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Any other question? None. Thank you very much, members. Thank you for your attendance. Um, we will meet on Thursday at Johannesburg um, for Friday. And then um, after that, uh, we will continue with uh, our program. But one thing that I would like to raise, which I think I did raise last week, is that our program would need to be revised from a uh, week after next um, to accommodate the fact that we have not yet received permission to, to ask uh, for Parliament's permission to um, invite public comments on the cannabis bill. Um, that report, in fact, we had made a request, but it has lapsed. It is going to be revived on Thursday in the House, which means it, we will only be able to, to make our application in the House the following week and uh, next week. Um, and then thereafter, we would have to give members of the public between two to three weeks for them to make uh, their, their comments. So that will necessarily make, uh, affect our program. So, but we will revise the program accordingly to take all of those things into consideration. Thank you very much, members. The meeting is adjourned.